The Anglins and Crosstown LRT vehicles are from the same product family as Toronto streetcars. So, what's the difference? Earlier this year, I did a video about this line. There's a magic link up here, and I'll put a link down in the description so you can find it when you finish watching this video. And in that video, I mentioned there are some differences between them, and I asked if you wanted a video on that. I said it'd be kind of nerdy, and you said yes. So, grab your pocket protector, your beanie, and your thick black rim glasses, and let's dive in. This video is primarily about the vehicles themselves, but there's a question that always comes up. What's the difference between a streetcar, a tram, and an LRT anyway? So let's get that out of the way. The answer is, it's not actually black and white, and the terms are not always used entirely consistently. But by and large, if it runs in its own dedicated right of way, whether that's down the middle of a street, or on an elevated guideway, or underground, or whatever, it's usually called an LRT. If it shares its space with other things like buses, or cars, or cyclists, or pedestrians, it's usually called a streetcar in this part of the world, or a tram in other parts of the world. Which kind of brings us to some of Toronto's streetcar routes, like this one here, on Spadina. Most of this route runs in its own dedicated right-of-way. So why don't we call it a, an LRT? I can think of a few possible reasons. One of them is, it uses the same vehicles as our streetcars. Another is that it follows roughly the same route as a previous streetcar line many years ago. And it might just be that we're used to calling these things streetcars in Toronto. Incidentally, I did touch on a little bit of the history of the Spadina streetcar in my video on Spadina Station. Links in the usual places. Back to the vehicles themselves. Both models are part of Bombardier's Flexity family of vehicles. And in both cases, Bombardier had, um, issues delivering the vehicles on time and in working order which is at least part of the reason why the Finch West LRT, a project which started later than the Eglinton line, is using vehicles from Alstom rather than Bombardier. Although, ironically, Alstom has since bought Bombardier's rail division. The Eglinton Crosstown LRT vehicles are the Flexity Freedom model, while the streetcars are a customized version of the Flexity Outlook. Why customized? There are a few reasons for that. Toronto's streetcar system has tighter curves and steeper grades than many of the European tram systems for which this model was originally designed. That required some changes. And unlike some tram systems, our streetcar system is designed for unidirectional operation, with vehicles going around loops at the end of their run, so our vehicles don't need driver's cabs at both ends. There are a couple of unusual things about the tracks for Toronto's streetcar system. The first one is the track gauge. That's how far apart the tracks are set. The Toronto streetcars and subways use a gauge that's a few centimeters wider than standard gauge, and it's a gauge that's unique to Toronto. Why? Well, the reasons for that go back to the mid-1800s and deserve a video of their own, so keep your eyes on my channel for that. The other one is that the Toronto streetcar system uses single-point switches. That's not unique to Toronto, but most rail-based systems use two-point switches. The points are the parts of the switch that move to direct the wheels in the correct direction. As you can see in this picture of a two-point switch, you can see that there are points on both sides. Toronto's streetcar system uses single-point switches like this one. If you look closely, you'll see the one on the left has a point and the one on the right does not. The vehicles have to be designed specially for this, typically with solid axles, so that the wheels don't go off in the wrong directions. The Flexity Freedom LRT models are a model designed for the North American market. As I mentioned in my previous video, these are also used on the Ion Line in Waterloo Region and on the Valley Line in Edmonton. And because they're designed to be used outside of just Toronto, these are not Toronto gauge, they're standard gauge vehicles. Incidentally, the Scarborough RT was also standard gauge and for basically the same reason. That was a system also designed to be sold outside of the Toronto market. There's a little bit more to that story. I'll cover that in my upcoming video on Toronto gauge. These vehicles have a horn that they can sound as a warning, 
They also do have the traditional Toronto streetcar gong, and they have a sound something like this. There are slight differences in size. The LRT vehicles are roughly a meter longer and 10 centimeters wider, and as I said in my earlier video, they have doors on both sides as opposed to only on one side for the streetcars. They have a slightly higher maximum speed, which will be useful in the underground and elevated sections where the line is separated from unpredictable things like pedestrians. The streetcars are only intended to work as individual units, and after all, they're already longer than the longest previous streetcars used by the TTC, so trains of them wouldn't actually fit at a lot of stops or stations. The LRT vehicles can work in trains with a driver in the front vehicle controlling the whole train, and everything on this line is designed to handle trains of up to three cars. Since the LRT line was designed from scratch, it could avoid having the tight curves and steep grades of the streetcar system, so these vehicles don't have to be designed to handle those, and the minimum curve radius for the LRT vehicles is more than double that of the streetcars. And while both vehicles run on direct current, the voltage is different, 600 volts for the streetcars and 750 volts for the LRTs. Obviously, the streetcars had to be designed to work with the existing electrical system, while the LRT didn't, but unlike Toronto's unique rail gauge, both voltages are in use elsewhere in the world. Speaking of the electrical system, one noticeable difference is that the LRT vehicles use pantographs, whereas the streetcars were delivered with both pantographs and trolley poles. Since the previous streetcars used trolley poles, that's what the overhead cabling system was designed for, and the new streetcars had to be capable of working with the existing wiring, but pantographs offer advantages including greater power capacity, so the TTC has been replacing the old wiring with new wiring designed for pantographs. What's the difference? There are a few, including how things like two lines crossing each other are handled, but there's one that's visible along the whole length of the system. Ideally, the wire for a trolley pole should stay fairly close to the center of the vehicle so the pole doesn't have to move much, reducing the risk of it coming off the wire, but that poses a problem for pantographs. No matter what kind of system you use, there's friction between the wire and the part of the pole or the pantograph that makes contact with it, and that's going to cause wear. So there's a replaceable carbon conductor on the end of the pole or on the top of the pantograph, since the carbon is softer than the metal wire, the carbon wears down but the wire and the pole or pantograph remain undamaged. If you use a pantograph on a system where the wire is usually right in the middle, you'll rapidly wear out a notch in the middle of the carbon strip. To avoid this, the wire for pantographs intentionally zigzags from side to side so that the carbon wears fairly evenly across its width. You can see in this photo of the LRT cabling system how the arms holding the cable alternate between long and short arms, producing the desired zigzag pattern in the wiring. And there you have it. There are some of the major differences between the LRT vehicles and the streetcar vehicles. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, or if you want to be notified when I release the next video about Toronto Gauge, you know what to do. Please like and subscribe.